Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the rumpled one, coming to you on Friday, June the 4th, the year is 2021. Let's talk trading. It's time for the weekly wrap up, and it is NFP day. For the record, these videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine. So we'll bring up the weekly chart. And as we look down the gap column, all of the gaps, the weekly open gaps have filled. And look at this. We are right here at the weekly open. So we went up, we went down this week, and we're right back where we started. As you can see, there was a nice breakout to the high. It looks like there was about a 30 pip move off of the break there. And at the low side, it looks like there was only about mm, a difference of about eight pips either way there was money to be made taking the weekly previous week's high low breakout and uh one of the things you can see we had a uh weekly high at uh 42 47 and for the past couple of months every time price has been up around the 42 i always tell walmart i should have shorted at 42 well guess what it happened again today uh he and i were in the middle of uh we're working on something else here but price had uh spiked up um well on my other broker it actually did hit 42 like 005 or something but here we've got 41998 close enough right because a the short there would have paid off it was in the rat zone Def and now price is out of the rat zone. So that would have been a nice little payoff. As you can see here, um, we had the uh, weekly opening range, and then we had the monthly opening range. Yesterday we fell through it, and today we roared back into both of them. 472 pips, 73 pips off the yearly open. The uh, inside bar on the daily that happened five days ago, you can see we broke out a couple of, you know, Wednesday and Thursday, we broke back in. There was a break out of the inside bar of last week on the weekly. Lots of inside bar action here. Once again, no squiggly lines were harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> Had some, uh, I guess, okay movement considering it's NFP day. We got two, three, four, five, six, only seven pairs over 100 pips in range, high minus low. That's plenty to make money, but usually pairs move a little bit. <laughs> it's like the euro only 81 it's like what's going on with the currencies so we almost had an outside bar today we had one yesterday pip point got taken out And once again, the rats, red rats, got their cheese. At this, the green rats, this wasn't a rat zone at this time. Price had to move up. So this really, this was anything. This would have been a wick zone trade, I would imagine, not a rat zone. Pivot trilling. A pivot trading plan shows that near the pivot point, they said the bias was short. Near S1, the bias was long. It didn't really get that close to S1, but it did hit R1, calling for a short here. Actually, we're right at that level right now. Missed pivots. We had one in May one in april one in february this year you see we took out the pivot no problem on the weekly we're right at it and the monthly 
so far we just we missed it by three pips so we'll see what happens um for the rest of the month wick zone in and out of the lower and you can see we barely got out of the upper so somebody go that's a false breakout no that's just a small breakout no such thing as a false breakout and we look at the ranges so right now it's first week of the month so we haven't even moved the needle high minus previous high we did break out so 14 pips so far uh to low um high minus close for rats we got 76 low, close minus low 89 so taking those monthly rat zones would have paid off nicely so far we can switch the time frame over to the weekly and you can see here once again it's pretty much the same 77 88 trading out of those weekly rat zones simple price action chart that i've uh, made not so simple anymore but if you don't pay attention to the dots and spots um, you can see here using the Walmart line in the previous H1 high and low for triggers. So if we switch this over to the hour chart, you can see it triggered, but really wasn't much of a trade there. It's uh, noon. It's past time to trade the Walmart method, but you can see here when NFP released, it went right through the launch pad at 40 area. So I hope a few traders out there caught that launch. And it was really kind of funny because um, when we were looking at that, Walmart and I, um, we were looking at like right before, I guess you can't really see it here, but right before that minute before the um, I've got auto scroll on. So let me just turn that off. Properties, common, take auto scroll off for a second here. Go back to that big, where'd it go? Okay, why don't I say it? That's yesterday. Here we go. I went back way too far. This was the um, bottom of the hour here. And I said, Walmart, they're doing a fake out. And so right before they moved it down and it popped up, the announcement came and boom, huge bar. And a lot of times um, I've been trading NFP for a decade or more now. Um, uh, and I, I noticed this, they usually do that little fake out move and they did it once again. But you just get that from uh, seat time, chart time. It's because uh, I know there's still a few traders out there who um, are, are struggling with the Walmart method or in any of the methods for that point. There's a, I think there's somebody having a hard time with the rat zone. And you guys, you traders just have to understand the statistics are there. 
You just have to figure out what you're not doing, you know, right or what you're doing wrong that's keeping you from the profits because they're there to be had. You just have to take them. You know, sometimes they're a little, sometimes they're a lot. But, you know, trading can be frustrating. <laughs> you know, as I like to say, you know, I'm Mr. Inflection Point. It just seems like, you know, so many times I'll get in a trade and it'll stop and it'll go the other way. But it's just, you know, it's just the luck of the draw sometimes that the market didn't smile upon me. And that's why you have to have strategies that can uh, give you those opportunities. And one of the things, especially if you're not profitable and especially if you're learning something new, you have to cut down on the variables. And you know who I'm talking to out there if you're watching this video you don't start juggling two balls you start you learn to juggle by juggling one ball okay because if you don't learn how to throw one ball you're not going to be able to throw two or three you have to be able to throw it consistently in the same place with both hands and that takes practice so you want to trade the wall mall method you pick one pair or one instrument to trade I don't care if it's a stock, a commodity, a crypto, you know, Forex pair. You pick one and that's all you do. You don't care about the rest. And then you make sure you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. So, and you get all the junk off the chart that you don't need or you're not using. Because really, all you need is the sweet spots. And we like to put the high low in there. We found that if, if, if the high is between the wall mall or lows between the wall mall, to take, that, take those breakouts as opposed to waiting or to hit one of the uh, uh, 10 lines. But, you know, at the end of the day, you look back and you look at these H1 charts and you see where it opens and you see, oh, there was a trade there. 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 You know, oh, there was a trade there. And you look at the session time that, Wal that we trade the Walmart method. And I think here's one that didn't pay out. This is the only one. And so maybe here, if you were to trade it this one right at the, uh, that was at the daily open, um, you might have gotten burned there. But turn right back around and make money. So one instrument, one method. And remember, you know, the key to brilliance is simplicity. You want to remove all that you don't need. So what's left is just what you need. And I know it's hard to do because I know you want to put shiny objects on there because in fact, I mean, you could say, yeah, this is a shiny object. This was something that I was trying out, which I found it was really, it was something new that's really something old. It's basically the, um, you're looking to see if the previous if the current midpoint is above or below the previous midpoint, <laughs> that's really basically what these do to give you a, a directional bias. So anyway, fellow traders, um, that wraps up the week. I hope you had a profitable week. I hope NFP Day paid out for you. And I hope you have a fun and safe weekend. And just remember when you sit down in your trading terminal, <laughs> it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the rumpled one over and out.